How's it going guys? Techspace here. Hope you're all doing well. Yesterday, Apple announced a new iPad Pro as well as a new MacBook Air via a website refresh, obviously because they couldn't do a March event. So today I'm going to be going through their website and what is new with the iPad and MacBook. So let's get started. So when we go onto the iPad Pro section of Apple's website, we're greeted with this uh, iPad with a new lovely red, blue and purple wallpaper and it looks very similar to the one last year in terms of design by the front. It has the same bezel, the same squared of design, but as we scroll it goes into this nice animation where it attaches to the new keyboard that they've also announced alongside it. It already starts bragging about how your next computer is not a computer because obviously they want to push the iPad as being a replacement for a normal laptop and uh, it already says it's so fast most PC laptops can't catch up and it's a magical piece of glass and it has pro cameras which obviously is a big feature because that was rumoured for the new iPad Pro and uh, it also says you can now use it with touch, pencil, keyboard and now trackpad which is obviously the main purpose of this case that they've also announced. It will be available starting the 25th of March and the keyboard will be coming in May and I believe the keyboard will work on the previous iPad Pro as well. So first off they start going into the, the liquid retina display which is the same as the one that they had on the previous iPad. So it's 120 hertz, it has true tone, it has 600 nits of brightness and all the usual stuff you'd see on a display in 2020. And it comes in two sizes, it comes in 11 inch and 12.9 inch, so obviously like two inch difference diagonally. And the main attraction is obviously the new cameras that they have put on the iPads. So there's a new 10 megapixel ultra wide camera like on the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro. And it also has a 12 megapixel standard wide camera. And here they also have a new uh, sensor, which is a LiDAR scanner, which determines distance by measuring how long it takes light to reach an object and reflect back. And apparently NASA uses it for the next Mars landing missions. And the main purpose of this new scanner is for AR capabilities. And even though I think personally AR is sort of a gimmick, it could be useful and hopefully it will be coming to the iPhones in September. Uh, it also can shoot 4K video and take ultra wide photos, obviously using the new lens that they've added, the ultra wide lens. Uh, it also has the same true depth camera on the front for Face ID and FaceTime and Animoji and all of the usual stuff. It has the new A12Z Bionic chip and it says everything is fast and fluid. I was surprised that they didn't do the A13 or A13X Bionic chips because that's what they usually do but they choose, chose the Z this time. It has 8 core graphics and it's designed for 4K video editing, 3D design and augmented reality. And obviously for all of these pro apps, such as like Photoshop, Word, Procreate, iPadOS obviously has multitasking features so they advertise that. So let's get into the new Magic Keyboard. It has a new design obviously holding the iPad magnetically upwards and it has like a gap here meaning it floats and you can adjust the angle of it like this and I think that's 120 degrees I'm pretty sure and uh, on the side it has this tube like thing which is a USB-C port which charges the iPad Pro obviously this is due to the iPad connecting via the smart connector on the back so hopefully that will be good for charging uh, the keyboard is a full-size keyboard now and not squished like the previous one and it's also backlit so it can be used at night time but the main thing here is the trackpad that they've added which makes the iPad better for more intense stuff such as editing text and stuff like that for precision things that most people found annoying through touch input. 
uh, the cursor has been redesigned. It isn't your traditional cursor, like the one on the Mac. It's this new circle thing here, which when it uh, goes close to any icons, it pins to them automatically. So as you can see here, it appears when you move it and it uh, pins to the menu. And obviously then you click on it, which I guess is useful because obviously Apple doesn't want the iPad to replace the MacBook. They still want people to buy MacBooks. And I think this is one of the main reasons why, because people think, oh, let's get an iPad instead. It obviously supports Apple Pencil, the second generation one, which attaches magnetically and pairs and charges wirelessly on the side. Uh, it's thin, light and durable, and it has up to 10 hours of battery life to keep it going all day. It weighs just over a pound, according to Apple, and yeah, all day battery. It also has Wi-Fi 6, gigabit class LTE, a USB-C port like the last one, and four speaker audio so you can watch content and have good stereo audio. And it starts at 7.99. That's just the start though. So you can, if you really wanted to, you could go and max it out to 1,649, which is a lot for an iPad. But if you are going to buy an iPad Pro, I recommend getting the previous one, which obviously has dropped in price, unless you really want these new cameras on the back. But as someone who doesn't use the camera on the iPad, I think I've only ever used it once. I don't think it's worth the upgrade for just the camera because it's not like there's a new design or new display or something like that. Or because as well, the keyboard also is supported on the previous version too. Apple also announced a new MacBook Air, which is cheaper at $9.99, and it obviously has better display, better performance, just a minor upgrade, it's not really anything different, it didn't really change the design as such, like they did the 16-inch MacBook Pro. It has an Intel Core i7 processor, which is quad-core, and uh, it can have better CPU performance, faster graphics, and you can configure it up to 2 terabytes of storage. They've also given it the old Magic Keyboard one because of all the complaints on the Butterfly Keyboard. So it has a redesigned scissor mechanism and it has a 20% larger trackpad. It also has Touch ID and it has a slightly louder speakers as well. As shown here, it has more bass and more volume and three microphones too. It has, also has Thunderbolt 3. And obviously it has macOS Catalina and all the usual apps. And it's also, according to Apple, made with 100% recycled aluminium. Johnny Ive would be proud. And uh, like I said, it costs $9.99, which is nice for people who want a MacBook, but obviously can't afford more than one grand for a MacBook. Obviously a bit of a long video today, guys, but thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I will see you guys next time.